Hi there, it's Nicola from NKC Equestrian Training. Thanks so much for downloading your free When to Call the Vet video. I know confusion about when to call the vet is something that affects lots of horse owners just like you and I run equine first aid courses and on the first aid courses this is a section we go into lots of detail on and something that people always tell me they've been confused about. After coming to the course they always say I feel so much clearer, I know what I could treat on my own uh, and which scenarios I definitely need to get the vet out for. So we're going to look at some different scenarios that you should phone the vet out for, such as colic, choke, snotty noses uh, and why that would be important to phone the vet. We're going to look at uh, different wounds when you'd want to call the vet uh, and also eye injuries. So before we look at those, it's really important to just consider what is normal for your horse. Uh, you as the owner or rider are the person that knows the horse best and the vets on my courses always say it's so important that you know what is normal. So you should know your horse's temperature and ideally it's heart rate and it's respiration rate. But if you only did one thing, taking your horse's temperature for three days at the same time of day and recording and working out an average and recording that would be really, really helpful. It always surprises me at the first aid courses how many people say, oh no, I've never taken my horse's temperature. Uh, and this can be really, really valuable information to see if your horse is actually feeling a little bit off colour. So taking temperature, really, really vital. Your horse's temperature should be in a range of 37.5 to 38.5. But again, just like us, your horse is an individual. Some may have ever so slightly lower normal temperature. Some may have fractionally higher. But if you don't know what normal is, then you don't know when it's abnormal. So please, please, please take your horse's temperature. It's really easy to do. We talk about this a lot of the first aid course and we talk you through how you do that. Uh, it's surprisingly straightforward. And after courses, people always say, oh, I took my horse's temperature. It was so easy, like you said. And now I've got the information recorded in case um, my horse is unwell. I need to know what normal is. So really need to know what normal is. So when you'd call the vet would really be several cases when your horse is abnormal. For example, snotty noses would be a really good scenario about when you should call the vet. If you know that your horse has perhaps a very slight dust allergy, and in the winter when it's stabled more and eating perhaps from a hay net with its head up, that in the morning it might have very slight clear mucus coming out of um, one or two nostrils, so just like a really small discharge, that would be perfectly normal for your horse. That's fine. If your horse suddenly develops thick uh, snotty mucus coming out of one or both nostrils, which is yellow or green in colour, that can be an indication that your horse is really not that well. So if you took your te the horse's temperature as well, uh, you would probably find that that would be raised. This would definitely be a time to call the vet. So snotty nose and or a raised temperature together is likely to indicate an upper respiratory tract infection could be a case of pneumonia. Now pneumonia, um, some horse owners are unaware, can occur after your horse has traveled for a long period of time. So if your horse has traveled, developed a snotty nose, definitely take its temperature and definitely call the vet because that would be really need to be looking into. Could be a sign of equine influenza, a snotty nose. So again, that'd be really important to get the vet out. That's really contagious. Could be a, a sinus problem and it could also be strangles. So with strangles, you typically see enlarged lymph glands as well. Uh, strangles, as you probably know, is really, really contagious, really infectious. You need to get the vet out straight away, not only to treat your horse, but also to assess the risk of the other horses and to put some sort of isolation and quarantine in place for the rest of the yard. So snotty noses, know what's normal, a small amount of clear discharge. If that's normal for your horse, that's absolutely fine but thick yellow green snot is definitely indicating a problem. Get the vet straight away on that one. So choke, uh, choke you might have heard of before, or to give it its proper veterinary title of esophageal obstruction. This is when a horse has something blocking its esophagus. So generally that's food. Uh, and if you've ever seen a case of choke, it's actually quite, um, quite worrying, quite stressful. So the horse tends to splutter and cough and sort of saliva. They do a sort of gulping, swallowing action because they are just trying to 
it, um, to move whatever is blocked within their esophagus. So it's really important in cases of choke that you firstly stay calm, secondly call the vet really quickly because the vet might be 15 minutes, maybe even half an hour away. Uh, so if this doesn't resolve quickly, you really do need to get the vet um, to be at least on their way so they can check the horse over. Choke, as I said, really alarming for the owner. Uh, and it's important to remove all, all food and water and just keep the horse as calm as possible. So this is a classic equine emergency that we talk about on the first aid course in a lot more detail. Um, some owners have, have experienced choke before uh, and you know it's quite frightening as, the, as an owner or the person in charge of the horse. It's not very pleasant for the horse either. Uh, and some people have never heard of it. So it's really good to, to go over that on the course uh, and know that you are better equipped to deal with such an emergency should that come up. So I've mentioned the equine first aid courses that I run with different vets um, from local vet practices. I run these across the south and they are really popular for owners who just want to either refresh their first aid knowledge or build on their existing knowledge. People commonly come on these courses because they are just unsure whether they should phone the vet, they're not sure how to deal with colic uh, and they perhaps have had a break from horses. Quite often people come uh, on the course and they haven't had a horse for a few years, they think about getting a, a new horse and they want to make sure they've got the most up-to-date information ready for looking after their new horse. So we'd love it if you could come to a, one of our first aid courses near you. So we've got lots of uh, different venues that we run courses at. So we've got two different options for you. One is the BHS first aid course. So I call this the refresher or the newcomer option. So this is just a one day training course. All the training is delivered by a vet. It's very interactive. Uh, the day is really good fun. So we make sure that you learn lots, but also you have lots of fun. Uh, and this is your chance to just ask the vet all the questions that you've ever wanted to. So it's not often you get to spend an entire day with a vet and you can really, really pick their brains. So what we cover on that course is we look at vital signs for your horse, keeping your horse healthy. We look at when you should call the vet in, in more detail. We look at different equine emergencies such as colic, choke. Uh, we look at infectious diseases and how you could perhaps tackle some of those. Uh, we also look at um, some different lameness cases and we spend quite a lot of time looking at wounds. We'll teach you what you should have in your first aid kit, what you shouldn't have in your first aid kit and how best to use these items. So we look at how you should like put a bandage on uh, and how you should dress a wound. So people that come on these courses find that that's really, really helpful to either build on their existing knowledge um, or to have a bit of a refresh if they've had a bit of a break from horses or perhaps they just haven't really had to use some of those skills for a while and they just want to make sure it's really at the forefront of their mind. So our other option that we have is the ultimate owner plan, which is two one day training courses. So that's the BHS first aid course is one day and then the second day is equine anatomy and then looking at more detail at uh, seasonal first aid, so, so different uh, illnesses, conditions which could affect your horse at different points um, during the year and we also look at different conditions which will affect your horse throughout its lifetime. So we cover everything from young stock to the competing horse uh, right through to an older animal. So it really covers your horse's lifespan on that second course. Um, so you've got the option of one course or, or two one day courses. And I'm gonna send you uh, a link to the booking site. Uh, you can also go straight to the booking site at the bottom of this page. So there's a button which says book now, book here now. So owners who've come on those courses say that they felt really unsure about when they should be calling the vet. They just didn't know how to deal with colic and they just really didn't feel happy and equipped to deal with an emergency like a horse falling over or being really unwell or having a, a nosebleed, something like that. They just didn't have the tools to deal with that. So after the courses, uh, owners always feed back to me that they have really enjoyed the day and they feel much more confident to cope with colic. They now understand how to recognise early signs. They know what the process would be uh, if, if when, and when to get the vet, what the process would be for the, when the vet comes uh, and how to be better equipped for such emergencies. So if you're still not sure if coming on one of these courses is the right thing for you, 
Uh, I'd like to just say that it's quite often people that come on the course say, oh, I wasn't sure if it would be too basic or I wasn't sure if the knowledge would just be too, too much. Would it be too many binary terms or I feel too much out of my depth? So quite often people do feel like that, and, and which is one of the reasons I offer a money back guarantee. So if you're not happy with the course, you can get your money back. All the terms and conditions are on the booking site, but you can come along with confidence that if it's not for you, you can get your money back. Uh, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. We get lots of people saying how great the courses are. Next thing to look at would be colic. So colic is the kind of um, horse disease that most people have heard of. Uh, colic is not actually a disease. It's just a veterinary term for abdominal pain. So colic. Most horse owners can't actually recognise the early signs of colic. A study done by Nottingham University a few years ago found that 90% of owners did not understand what early colic signs were. So together with the British Horse Society, Nottingham University vets put together a campaign called REACT. And this is really, really easy to remember, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this now. So REACT. One, you need to react now, but two, REACT is, is a, an acronym uh, so it's really easy to remember different signs which can indicate colic. So the R stands for restlessness or your horse being agitated. So your horse just seeming unable to settle, it's maybe pacing around its box, looking a bit uncomfortable. That can be a sign of colic and would be a time to call the vet. Eating less or passing less droppings would be the next letter. Uh, again, something that can be easily missed if you don't know what normal is for your horse. Some horses is completely normal for them to maybe not finish all of their food. Most horses do like their food and tend to finish up everything that's in their bucket. So if that's your horse, if your horse is a bit of a greedy guts and doesn't finish its food, that can be definitely a sign to investigate. That could be a, a, an early sign of colic. Your horse might pass their droppings. That could be a sign of impacted colic. And your horse's droppings might change consistency. They might become very hard or perhaps looser. Again, Early signs of colic, definitely phone the vet, at least for a chat if nothing else. So the next letter in the REACT acronym is abdominal pain. So I think this is a classic kind of colic sign that we can all picture. The horse sort of staring around at its belly, looking uncomfortable, might be kicking out its flanks. Again, clear sign of colic, phone the vet. So clinical signs that you might see would be a raised heart rate. So again, this stems back to what we talk about on the first aid course, but how important it is to know what normal is for your horse. Normal heart rate should be between 30 and 40 beats per minute. But again, if you know what's normal for your horse, then you'll be able to judge if it is increased. You might notice if your horse is in um, early stage of colic, reduced gut noises or perhaps an absence of gut noises. Again, definitely a time to call the vet. Gums. Uh, if you know what your horse's gums normally look like, so they should look uh, like a salmon pink colour, they should look quite uh, bright, and you should have a capillary refill time of one to two seconds. So if you press on uh, the horse's gum, it should go white for a brief second and then just fill back with blood uh, and be a salmon pink colour really quickly again. If your horse's gums are dry or tacky, that can be a clear indication of colic, call the vet. Final sign to look out for would be your horse looking tired or lethargic. Again, goes back to knowing normal. Some horses, just like standing at the back of their stable with their heads down, that's just their normal. But if your horse normally stands at the front of the stable, ears pricked, banging the door, into everything, and is standing at the back of the stable looking head down a bit depressed, then I would phone the vet there because that's not normal for your horse. So that's colic, eye injuries. Now, eye injuries can be really alarming and time is of the essence. You need to react like colic uh, and phone the vet quickly. So if your horse's um, eye, one or both eyes, is swollen or shut, you should most definitely call the vet straight away. Don't be tempted for someone else to offer you some sort of eye drops or cream. Don't put anything in it. Just phone the vet straight away. Um, most likely, it's corneal ulceration. Uh, it's the most common cause of eye injuries in horses or um, eye problems in horses, and that's generally caused by trauma. You definitely need the vet and you need them straight away, so give them a ring. 
Final area to just touch on would be different types of wounds that you'd need to phone the vet for. So if you found your horse perhaps in the field and it had uh, had a, maybe a kick and there was profuse bleeding, so if you can't stop that bleeding quite quickly, you need to phone the vet. If the entire skin, uh, thickness of the skin has been broken, again, you need to phone the vet. If there is a skin flap present, again, phone the vet. Possibly the wound might need stitching, depends where it is. Um, if the wound is near a joint or a tendon or another synovial structure, you 100% need to find the vet because the risk of infection into a joint is just not, it's just not worth taking the risk. It's just too big a risk. So knowing your horse's basic anatomy is, is really important, which is why uh, on the second first aid course, we look at anatomy as well. This is something that vets always say, know what should go where and it will really help you decide whether you need to phone the vet because what could be quite a small cut just in the wrong place perhaps just sitting on a joint if it had been a couple of centimeters higher or lower probably wouldn't need the vet but if it's in the wrong place you definitely need the vet because you just you need to have that joint potentially flushed out and you don't want to have to risk an infection getting in there and then the horse having to have surgery or something later so puncture wound would be another time you'd need to phone the vet um, if the horse is very, very lame, particularly if the wound is very small, because that can be an indication that there is an infection, so that'd be a time to call the vet. Uh, it might be contamination or a foreign body present. Again, need to phone the vet. So a common example of that would be your horse treading on a nail. Uh, it seems commonsensical to just pull the nail out. Actually, that would be probably the worst thing you could do, because you need the vet to come and x-ray and then decide where the damage is, see where the damage is, and then the vet can pull the nail out with causing minimal damage in the process. So I'd really, really like to work together with you uh, and the team of vets that I work with to just help you be a better owner and to stop you feeling confused and worried, oh, do I need the vet, do I not need the vet? Coming on one of the courses, you'll definitely know if you need the vet or not. So I really hope to see you at one of the courses soon.